So uh, I'm going to introduce the, the new uh, Pentex Studioscope to you, and Professor Pratt already told us everything, the important th things about it. So <clears throat> as you know, it all got started some years ago when the first reports started to appear that there were cross-contaminations uh, causing even deaths, mostly in the United States, and, and the mainstream media started to deal with it. Then, of course, the lawyers came in and started suing uh, hospitals and getting money for their patients. And then more and more also the medical community uh, got used to the idea that there was something wrong. And then FDA did a lot of work on this. And they also uh, organized an already cited advisory committee meeting. And this was the agenda of this May 2015 uh, advisory committee meeting. First, they, they discussed and tried to improve uh, manual cleaning, the human tried to eliminate human factors, but there was an important part also about on device design. As you've already heard, uh, duodenoscopes uh, are somehow difficult to reprocess, also because they're very complex instruments, but also some of them are flawed in designs. And, and the conclusion was that the participants uh, stress the importance that the design of duodenoscopes has to change in order to improve disinfection, in order to avoid the risk of cross-infection. Other topics were culturing and, and uh, additional measures to, to enhance the duoscope reprocessing. So, as you know, doctors don't always care about hygiene. They always care about the performance of the instruments, about uh, how well a procedure can be done. Um, but Actually, if you look at this short video clip, this is, this is it. I mean, that's the whole thing. You just mount the cap with the elevator. You can see it here. Um, <clears throat> that's the, the elevator made out of plastic polymer. It takes a second. And it's, it's basically fail-proof, so even I could do it, and I'm a doctor. Uh, imagine, imagine how easy it is for your assistants. Uh, but, of course, we, with every new technology, we have questions. We use to our scopes, we like them, we, we're familiar how they work, we know their advantages and disadvantages. And the question is, ooh, it's plastic, and we know plastic is cheap, plastic never works. So, in real life, how's the performance? Well, uh, first thing is, your duodenal scopes, they might be years old. So, they have wear and tear, they, they've lost some of their initial precision. And, and with the deck design, you get an, a new elevator every time you t take the scope out and, and use it for a procedure. And that means that there is no wear because it's used once and then you throw it away. And the next time you get a new sterile one and mount it onto the tip of the scope. Uh, the, the, sh the shape of the elevator is basically what it used to be with the old duodenoscope. So with, in daily practice, you won't uh, notice much of a difference in handling. Actually, it's in my experience at least, if I didn't know, I would say it's identical. Um, and of course, being single use, there is no play like you get with an older duodenoscope, and the coupling seems to work really fine. Um, Actually, the plastic might have some, some uh, advantages in the initial experience we're having with these instruments. It seems to me that the, the, the elevator is a little bit grippier, so you have a firmer uh, grip of your guide wire, you have less slip of the guide wire, and um, the elevator has been adapted a little bit so you can have a little bit more leverage with, uh, with the deck instrument than you have got with the old instrument. And here's some examples from, from the cases we did. On the left-hand side, you can see how we insert a, a dilation balloon for a sphincteroplasty for stone extraction, so that's a fairly stiff catheter. On the right-hand side, you see another everyday procedure, removing of a plastic stand, and you can pull it through the elevator and the working channel, and uh, there's no pro uh, danger of damaging the elevator, even if it's plastic. So for all those standard procedures we're performing every day, uh, this works as beautifully as, as any other duodenoscope. Um, the, the, as I've already mentioned, we always worried with, with plastic that there's a lot of wear and tear, but uh, in, in, in my experience, unless you're told, you, you wouldn't guess uh, that, that you're using a plastic elevator. The only thing you, you might have noticed that you can see it every now and then on the, on the tip of the scope but the precision when you insert the guide wire, when you try to cannulate the papilla, as you can see here, is as good as with any other duodenoscope. 
Other than that, it's actually the most boring instrument I ever got because it's basically the same, uh, which is a good thing in this case. So as you can see, this is the predecessor and the lower part of, the, of this uh, table and, and the new EDT34 i10 T2 DEC duodenoscope uh, in the upper part. So basically, it, the other features have unchanged. Uh, which means that the performance is very similar to the old one. And as I've already mentioned before, you won't notice much difference. At least you won't notice any deterioration with the plastic elevator than you have with a metal one. And even inserting stiff uh, in, uh, accessories like plastic stands or metal, metal prosthesis works as beautifully as with a metal elevator. Uh, Quite importantly, many things haven't changed, fortunately. For example, HD plus image resolution. Well, there are many people saying, all right, I don't care about the image resolution in a duodenoscope because most of the procedure is done under X-ray guidance anyway. But uh, it's, if you, once you get used to it, you, you, you won't give it back. It's like with your TV set. Once you had an HD TV set, you won't switch back to an ordinary tube. And it's the same with the duodenoscope. In, in difficult uh, situations where you have a very small papilla, it makes your life easier in identifying the right orifice. Uh, and in certain situations, like for example in ampulectomy, it really makes a huge difference. And I'm going to show you some examples. This is a case which is just did the other day. And as you can see, we have a large uh, ampulloma. And not only do you have a high resolution image, but you can also use the image enhancement you used from your colonoscope or from your gastroscope. So you can uh, use your digital and optical filters, the iScan OE. And if you want to, you can even use the twin view. So you have the white light picture on one side and the uh, image enhancement on the other side. And I'm going to show you in a second. And that really helps in order to assess the lesion correctly, in order to base the decision on the macroscopic appearance, whether you'd like to resect it or not. And in a second, we're going to switch to twin view. So you can see that you can even combine white light and an optical filter at the same time. And this was a very large ampulloma, so we decided to do an EOS before, and then we're going to uh, resect it as we didn't find any infiltration. And here's the twin view. On the right-hand side, you got the, the OE. On the left-hand side, the white, uh, uh, white light picture. And this is another case of an ampulectomy we did. And again, you can see that the image resolution is, is excellent. You can see the papilla on top of the adenoma. Uh, on the right-hand side, we place the snare after submucosal injection. But that's not the most interesting part. The interesting part comes once you uh, resected it and want to place a, um, a, the, the pancreatic stand. And as you can see here, uh, you can see the orifice, and that's very hard to do if you have a standard resolution duodenoscope, and it's so much easier to, to, uh, to cannulate uh, the, the pancreatic orifice with, with HD vision, and then uh, in a second uh, move, place the guide wire and then the pancreatic stand. So here, you can drastically see the difference between standard and, and high resolution. Uh, of course, there are things with every new instrument one doesn't like, and what's not, uh, what's not to like about the uh, DEC Video Duodenoscope ED32 i10 T2, and it's basically a very simple thing. All those companies run huge marketing departments, but why didn't come up, they come up with a sexier name than DEC Disposable Elevator Cap Video Duodenoscope ED34 i10 T2? I mean, seriously, I can't remember that, so that's the only time I'm mentioning it. Coming to my conclusions, the disposable elevator is an elegant solution for a problem, problem we haven't been aware enough and we didn't pay enough attention to. Uh, I mean, we've heard about infection situations for many years, but now, it, thanks to the data from the US and the Netherlands, it really has to become has become obvious that we have to change also not our daily practice, but also instrument design. As I've showed you, mounting the cap is fast and easy. It literally takes a second, and it's basically fail-proof. And in daily practice, and I think that's the most important part, you don't pay any price for, for this uh, improved disinfection control. You have no disadvantages by the removable elevator cap uh, and no reduced performance especially when you're dealing with very stiff accessories. And on the other side, on the positive side, the instrument keeps all the advantages like the high image resolution you're used to and uh, allows you uh, to perform good ERCP. And with this final slide from my now new hometown, I'd like to thank you for the attention for being here so early.